against King. This is nearly always a win, provided White can keep both pawns. In this position, the two pawns are self-supporting. If Black captures the defending pawn, he'll be outside the square of the remaining pawn, and the pawn will advance, and the King will not be able to capture the pawn, and the pawn will promote to a queen. Here is another example of self-supporting pawns. Say, for example, black moves to attack the pawn on d4. White advances his other pawn. And now, if black captures, the remaining pawn will queen. We back up a couple of moves. If black doesn't capture but moves back, black, white cannot advance his pawns, but he can start moving his king up to help the pawns. So these pawns, even though they are isolated, are in fact self-supporting. Pawns which are separated by even more files are also self-supporting. Okay, I'll show you that some positions where king and two pawns against king is a draw. One, one example is doubled rook pawns on the same file. In this case, this is a draw. Another example is doubled centre pawns. This is a critical position. The kings are in opposition. If it is black's move, black is in zug's wing, he has to move and make his position worse. And if it's white's move, but white is in Zug's wing. For example, if white moves the king back, black will move the king up. Black has to, white has to lose the pawn now. And now we've reached a drawn position with king and pawn against king. If instead white moves the pawn forward with check, the king blocks the pawn. And it doesn't matter what white does, if he moves the king to d6, that's stalemate. If he moves the pawn to d6, that's stalemate. If he moves the king anywhere else, he loses the pawn and again a drawn king and pawn against king position is reached. Now I'd like to look at a, some positions where white wins, but it's a bit uh, more, more difficult than most positions with two pawns against the king. In this position, white cannot win unless he sacrifices a pawn. One of the problems is the black king is close to the corner, which gives him lots of stalemate chances. For example, if white moves the king forward, the king goes in the corner, and if white moves the king forward again, it is stalemate. So what white does to win is sacrifice one of these pawns to lead to a winning king and pawn against king position. So the first move is to give up his powerful supported pass pawn on the seventh rank. Black takes it, the king moves forward, black must move to g8, and now White can put black into Zugzwang, he moves the pawn forward, and the king has to move out. Now the, black king, the white king moves up, controlling the queen in square, and next move, white will queen. Here is a position where white wins with his double pawns. If he moves the king forward, it will be stalemate. Here is another position where white wins. Here he has double pawns. If he plays the most direct move, moving the king up, keeping his advanced pawn defended, black is in stalemate. Instead, white sacrifices his most advanced pawn to 
reach a winning king and pawn against so king position. So he has to be careful here. If he moves the pawn forward, it's only a draw. So he moves the king into opposition. Save by moves into the corner. The king moves and controls the path of the pawn. Black moves his king. Now the pawn will queen in two more moves. So, king of two pawns against king is almost always a win for the pawns. Unless the king can uh, win one of the pawns. And being a drawn king and pawn against king position. If the winning side can keep both pawns, there are only a few drawn positions. Which uh, they all involve double pawns. Thank you for watching.